finally, after a year and a half, sitting abandoned and only half complete in my studio, I finished it. So, hey friends, this might come as a surprise to some of you, but I've not always been a painter or even called myself an artist. My journey to where I am so far today has been a bumpy road full of doubts and twists and turns. In today's video, which is a little different, I want to share with you the story, my story, behind this circular self-portrait painting, and I'll tell you a little bit about how I became a proudly self-proclaimed artist and YouTuber, all while showing you bits of the painting process on this large and what was for me ambitious autobiographical painting. As I share my story, maybe there will be some things that run parallel to your own journey or that you can relate to. I'd love to hear your comments down below. This painting represents an important shift in the trajectory of my life. You can see that my whole attitude is one of confidence. I'm standing on a wooden stair wearing a dress with bold navy and white stripes and ruffles, a wide brimmed hat, and I'm leaning forward chin high with an air of expectant excitement. My arm is upraised as I look outward, bold and hopeful, yet there is a slight furrowing of the brow, an almost smile, and a hint of uncertainty or even trepidation. I think this mixture of joy and fear perfectly represents the state of my emotions surrounding becoming a full-time artist. So let's rewind all the way back to, oh, 2019. I had two small kids at home. My son was three, almost four, and my daughter was six. My days were spent taking care of my children, teaching an occasional piano lesson, which up to this point was pretty much my full-time job or part-time. And sometimes if I had time, I was adding some cute little animal watercolor paintings to my Etsy store. At this point in my life, my kids consumed most of my time, but they were beginning to be just old enough that I could start pursuing my own interests a bit more. When you become a mom, you are forced to abandon a lot of aspects of self, at least for a period of time. You sacrifice your body, your time, your energy, and certainly your hobbies, they just fall to the wayside in order to keep these little humans alive and thriving. I found that by the time both of my kids were potty trained and could communicate well with me, I was finally beginning to feel like I could start to invest some time in myself again, maybe pursue my art some more, figure out some work that could have a meaningful impact on our family. Little did I know, my life was about to dramatically change forever. At the end of 2019, my husband quit his job. We were a jobless household. Now, to be fair, this was a calculated move on his part. He absolutely hated his sales job. He was actually a mechanical engineer by training and had switched to sales later on. But quotas had become unreasonably high. There were no leads in sight. And so we were trying to survive on his meager base salary. If any of you have worked in sales, you will totally understand the stress levels that he was under. We had some savings we could live on for a few months and he'd been working hard on some side hustles, selling products on Amazon. We weren't gonna starve, we hoped. <laughs> But with him suddenly home now, I needed to help contribute financially. I completely freaked out. <laughs> For a girl who has never made more than a meager salary as a part-time piano instructor, this seemed like an impossibility. I began to despair that I'd have to leave my kids and go to work for 10 hours a day in some dismal office somewhere. My skills and passions would be wasted and I'd never live up to my potential. Fortunately for me, Blake, my husband, is an insightful, future-focused man. He, of course, did not want me to be miserable. He suggested I start a YouTube channel. Now, a few months before this, I had posted this little time-lapse video of a grizzly bear cub on Pinterest just a 10 second speed paint video shot in poor lighting with my iPhone. The video took off. It racked up over 200,000 repins on Pinterest with multiple comments from people asking, do you teach this? So after that affirming little win, the idea of teaching art on YouTube seemed like a good idea with real potential. So together we watched dozens of videos on how to start a YouTube channel, how to grow a business, how to create an online course, etc. I took a two week crash course on Udemy on how to edit videos in Adobe Premiere. So by the end of November 2019, I shot and edited my very first YouTube video. I started guns a blazing. I was trying to create three videos a week. And then I also started a kids channel around the same time as if one channel wasn't enough. On YouTube, it seems like you just get lucky sometimes, and my channel grew pretty fast, especially when YouTube started suggesting my chickadee video. And the whole time I was working on growing my channel, I was also beginning to edit full-length watercolor tutorials. And by February of 2020, we were able to launch our online watercolor school, which is now called Watercolor Mastery. 
On the very first day that the program was opened, I only had five complete tutorials on the site, but I got a sign up, my first sign up. <laughs> that first member of the school just gave me the courage and the boost that I needed to just keep going, to put my head down and to work and to create. Now, as we all know, the pandemic hit the US in 2020, people were stuck at home. For a new online business, this ended up being a good thing. Many folks were seeking inspiration, education, entertainment, a new hobby online, and YouTube is the perfect place to find anything you want to learn. In my first full year as a full-time artist, YouTuber, and business owner, I made enough to really help our family and it was extraordinary. I was beyond grateful and began to believe that this unconventional and unusual artist path was the one for me and that it would continue to grow and maybe even thrive. It was and continues to be hard work, time intensive with daily distractions and interruptions, <clears throat> kids. I even made a video about what it's like being a mom working from home. You can watch that one over here. But getting back to this self-portrait. In 2021, my twin sister and I started our yearly tradition of going on a nature slash painting trip together. Anna has always been and continues to be a huge part of my story. I'm her number one fan and she's my inspiration and my best friend. She actually bought me my first set of watercolor paints. For our inaugural twin trip, we visited Big Bend National Park in Texas. Anna took these reference photos of me in the striped dress and these were taken at our Airbnb in the tiny town of Maranatha. Just as the golden hour was illuminating the stairway, I knew I would paint these photos someday. At this time in my life, I was feeling more confident in the future, filled with exciting painting and video ideas, yet still a bit fearful that I was maybe just an imposter, not good enough. I still very much struggle with those nagging insecurities that so many of us face when we put ourselves through hard things. Like every artist who bravely puts their work out there. I had already received my fair share of negative comments, I'd been rejected from various art competitions, and I was told I was doing this or that wrong. You have to learn not to internalize those negative voices, to develop thick skin, put on a brave face, and most importantly, just keep going. As of this recording, I'm getting so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I continue to grow as an artist and a teacher, and I feel more optimistic than ever about my future. This unconventional path as an artist on YouTube, it's not for everyone, but it has been one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video.